I'm going to try to document the process of building a little bit higher performance 45cc clamshell motor for this steel 025. One of the inherent issues with these motors is people have trouble adjusting the squish because they can't just mill the, the base here without having to also mill the bearing pockets and the seal pockets uh, with an effort to get the, the piston closer to the squish band in the cylinder. So uh, that, uh, among a few other things, I'm going to try to address in this build, see if we can make a good running example of this motor. So the first step will be parts selection, and then we'll time this eBay motor as it came to us. Uh, we've got a couple different choices of pistons here. We've got the one that came with it, or this little red barn pop-up piston. Um, there's a few different differences there. And... We'll have to see where our timing numbers land. I've got a few goals with this and I will try to communicate those better as we go, but one being, and let me move you guys, we'll get a better view. Okay, here, one of the goals being um, coming in here and cutting the squish band up. I've, well, my, my pre-estimation is we're gonna do that about 40 to 50 thousandths so that we can create a larger a larger amount of space between the squish band and the top of the exhaust port so that we effectively lower the top of the exhaust port uh, in doing that gaining some exhaust timing we'll have to see where it lands exactly when we time it out but then by doing that we'll have to we'll have to measure our squish and bring our our base height down and then recut our seal pockets and our bearing pockets and then after we get all of that in place I want to substantially increase the lower case volume by blending all of this taking out extra material here here's our intake side so our intake charge will come in and it'll come up against the back side of the wall here so I want to substantially remove material here and then come in and hollow out these corners take this sorry getting you out of frame hollow out these corners take this divider here up quite a distance and narrow it and then i'm also considering we're going to have to see where the locator pin lands here on the intake side but i'm considering coming in here and putting in a finger port on each side of the intake above the above the intake to help direct that'll be the first part of the charge that comes into the cylinder and that will create our swirl here at the intake forcing out of the exhaust and should help our wash pattern so that is the plan for the cylinder right now then some other other things sorry i just got my crankshaft out of the out of the freezer it's cold I need to put my bearings on it here in a little bit I want to come in here and depending on how much we lighten the piston here's our two pistons uh, depending on how much we lighten the piston we'll take the crankshaft say we lighten the piston 10% we'll lighten the crankshaft somewhere around five or six percent itself um, We'll blend all of our edges here on the rod. And here, we'll get rid of all of this casting here, all of the, the casting flash, and clean all that way up. And this is, all, this is all weight on the opposite side of the counterbalance. So this is free weight. Anything that is not uh, needed for, for strength here, and the main thrust of our strength will be in this line here so we can take quite a bit off here anything that's not needed for strength frees up weight that we can remove 
say it's here, we can remove that exact same amount of weight off here um, at the same distance from the rotating center. Uh, there's no great way for me to measure that outside of eyeballing it. Um, so we'll just have to see where we where we wind up on that. But the plan is to come in here close to the center of rotation and take out quite a bit of mass in this area, in this area, and then come in here and bring this is our PTO side. So bring our our leading edge of the crank to almost a knife edge here and here, and then kind of a, a teardrop shape on the back edge back here. That's the plan with the crank. Um, we'll have to see how much mass we can remove, but I'm sure it'll be significant. The piston, well, I guess I may as well go ahead and talk about it because I've already decided. So here's our two options for the pistons. We've got the flat top that does not bridge over the transfers here. It just has a front and rear or an intake and exhaust face. And then we've got our little bit, little red barn piston that does. This piston weighs about 62 grams, where this one is somewhere around 48 grams. And that's a, that's a big difference. And I do not see an effective way to lighten this piston to the point of this one, let alone how much lighter we can take this piston. And then on this particular engine, I've got another problem with this pop-up. And that has to do with this distance here and where that lands inside the cylinder. We put this in here, press up and just give it a little twist you can see the witness mark of where that pop-up rides is actually out here in the squish band. So if I want to tighten up the squish on this engine, I can't really tighten it up any tighter than the amount of the pop-up because my pop-up will contact my squish band. So for those reasons, this piston is it's out on this build. I may do something with it in the future. We'll have to figure that out. So that is where I'm at with the overall idea of this build. The hope is for substantial torque for the, the motor size and a good running, easy to tune saw. Uh, next step will be sliding those bearings onto the crank, dry fitting it all, and timing it up.